Good morning to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here, Monday now, the 21st of July, 2025. Great to be with you. Great to be back home in the home office after spending many weeks off and on on the road, going after severe weather out there in the Great Plains. But now, full attention, well, mostly anyway, to the hurricane season in front of us. We have Invest Area 94L. I'll tell you all about that. By and large, though, not a bad week ahead, just very hot and sultry, especially across the southeast and the eastern U.S., but the tropics, not a real big problem right now, very dry, stable air, pretty much dominates most of the areas, but we do have this invest area, this area of interest, and that's called 94L. We'll take a look at that and some other things as we go through today's update. All right, well, let's get started. Over on the interactive tracking map from the Hurricane Track Insider site, this gives you a good perspective as to where our area of interest is in relation to everything else. It's out here in the so-called main development region, and it's got about a 20% chance of developing over the next seven days. Conditions out here just aren't very favorable overall, but it is going to bring potentially some showers and thunderstorms to portions of the eastern Caribbean, maybe Barbados over here in parts of the Windward and Leeward Islands, We'll see. Remember, it's all about impacts at the end of the day. And this weather system, I'll show it to you in satellite in just a moment, will bring some impacts. It's not going to just go away to where there is nothing there. Whether or not it develops further, we'll just have to wait and see about that. So here's what it looks like on the satellite imagery today. And you can tell just by looking at this that there's a pretty stable air mass in place, mostly all across the deep tropics here. Uh, Saharan air layer coming out very warm air at the mid-levels. There is some moisture down here though, which you can clearly see. A little bit of a rotation in here, a little bit of vorticity, some humidity there in the mid-levels, uh, you know, a little bit of a, a spin-up. It's trying, that's why it's only 20%, because it's not glaringly obvious that this is going to go on to develop. There's just too much dry air, too much stability overall, and this probably won't do too much in terms of you know, becoming a storm or a hurricane or anything like that. But that's not what it's always all about, right? Look at that. That's a pretty big chunk of weather, and that's going to be heading into this direction over time. And so our friends over here in the islands, you're going to have to deal with it, whatever it is, right? And if you're vacationing down there, you've never been through one of these tropical disturbances, yeah, they can kick up some gusty winds, locally heavy rain, occasional lightning, and if you've got a sailboat out there, that could be problematic. And uh, so, yeah, that's why we track these things. It's not just for entertainment or because we're bored. This is a big weather feature if it impacts you. And at the end of the day, that is what it's all about. More energy lurking just off the coast of Africa. But again, look at this. And you can even see this push right here coming off Africa of uh, very dry, dusty air getting advected. Advection is the horizontal movement of air. Convection is when it goes vertical. So that air just gets blasted off the African continent. And you got Morocco over there, the Saharan Desert, and all kinds of dry air and particulate matter, even pieces of vegetation and locusts. I'm not kidding, not making it up. Uh, it lands on boats out there. It lands on the Cabo Verde Islands. And um, that dust can make it all the way across. But... Again, it's not the dust that's choking off these storms. The dust is the visible symptom. It is the dry air in the mid-levels of the atmosphere, dry warm air over warm moist air. You don't get any lift. You don't have that instability there. And uh, storm chasers know about this all too well. We call that a cap. And so right now, this blanket of warm mid-level air with some particulate matter ingested in it is keeping things uh, quite subdued for the time being. Anything else out there we need to worry about? Not really. Uh, upper level low spinning right here. Uh, an old front little trough uh, off the southeast coast. Maybe some of the leftover energy from 93L could be in here somewhere. But that's really about it. Pretty brisk trades blowing through the Caribbean and towards the Gulf and even the southeastern Pacific by and large. Not too busy right now, at least compared certainly to where we have seen it. So here's a great representation from the University of Wisconsin and their Cooperative Institute for Meteorological Satellite Studies. 
of the Saharan air layer. Look at all this dry air covering a good chunk of the Atlantic Basin. Uh, really dry through here. The Saharan air layer very prevalent. Big pocket of dry air sitting in the Gulf. This has nothing to do necessarily. I mean, maybe it's the leftovers of uh, some Saharan air layer that moved through. But this just shows you right here that the Atlantic just not very favorable right now from a thermodynamic perspective. And another way to look at it is the total precipitable moisture. This is really easy to understand here. This is your band of deep, rich moisture in the atmosphere, your total precipitable water, TPW. We also look at that as PWAT, or precipitable water in the atmosphere. That is measured by soundings. You can also look at it through special satellite instruments. And this is where all the moisture is. There's a little bit of turning in here. You can see that. It's really cool to see these animations, this large scale. So there are some tropical waves in here, but to the north is all of this uh, drier, more stable air, and that's not going to uh, do any favors to these systems that are trying to develop. When you see that, all that dry, uh, low precipitable water air mass in there, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's just not a sign of development. Pure and simple. Now, that all being said, at the surface, or close to it anyway, the bottom 5,000 feet or so, we do have the vorticity there. There is some energy there, uh, the relative vorticity, that's there. So there's like a little bit of a framework. That's the way I look at it. There's another piece over here. And this is the first time this season that we've really noticed this. And it's only July 21st. We have, you know, the last third of the month to go. And then a full additional month. And I want to make this very clear. Looking at climatology, how the season normally progresses. We, st we still have another 30 days roughly until we would expect to see a big uptick in activity. Right now, it is supposed to be like this. Now, we might be a little bit behind schedule overall, uh, considering the bad thermodynamic background state, but things look like they are gradually changing, and we very well might be setting up for a very busy September and October. Once again, I've seen a few people talking about this, Normally, we see things pick up the last third of August. Maybe that's not the case again this year, and we backload it deep into October once again. That seems to be the norm uh, really since 2020. Now, remember that year we had, of course, that was an exceptional year, but we had systems going. We had Eta, and we had Zeta, and Delta, and all that, October into November. And a lot of that is because of the very warm Caribbean and Gulf that we had, but also we had the La Nina that came on in 2020, and that is one area that is similar to what we're looking at now. This is the anomalies map. It's always a day behind, so this is yesterday. And you can see we're starting to get more of a cooling pattern in the tropical Pacific, the equatorial Pacific, really starting to cool off now, while the deep tropics through the Gulf, Caribbean's carved out a little bit in there, some pretty strong trades, but the main development region through here, the Canary Current, I mean, I'm not making this up. My eyes don't deceive me. The data, I mean, we assume it's correct, right? I don't own this product. I didn't make it, so I can't verify it. But, I mean, come on. We've been using this for years. And you got that horseshoe shape through there. Not entirely unfavorable, for sure. Now, all these big positive anomalies up in the higher latitudes, very curious to see and uh, how that sort of stretches uh, different parts of the atmosphere. You know, there's always a monkey wrench, it, it seems, that makes things hard to predict. But overall, the big puzzle pieces that we normally look at, and just a reminder, the warm main development region, the deep tropics in here, the warm canary current, and now the cooling off of the equatorial Pacific, clearly there's no El Nino that once we get towards the fall, and we start cooling off the upper atmosphere, we get more instability, things could really pop and do so in a hurry. And need I remind you that 2004 was a very similar situation where we went until the end of July. We finally had Alex there at the first part of August. I know because I was on the Outer Banks for it. And it wasn't until September 30th that we were done with landfalling systems for the United States. We ended the month of September. We had six landfalls, something like that, right? We had all Alex, we had Bonnie, we had Charlie, I had Gaston, we had Francis and uh, Ivan in there. 
yeah, very, very big season. Not saying this is going to be like that, but a lot of people thought that 04 was just going to be, eh, not prob- probably not a big season. Stuff can happen even in a six-week period is my main point here. So enjoy the quiet. If you got some preps that you can do, trim those trees back. Maybe finally get some storm panels that you've been waiting for. Check the generator. Go get you some quick dam, flood bags, whatever. Use this time. Seriously, stuff like that. Call your insurance company. If you have a local agent, sit down with them. Take them out for lunch. Get them a sandwich and find out what does it take if I've got a claim to make sure things move smoothly. All of these things you can do ahead of time to reduce your stress while the map looks like this before it starts filling up with a lot more stuff down the road. Oh, look at that. I didn't even notice this. That's funny. 10%. All right, well, we'll just leave that be. That one got past me. Anyway, that's what the global anomaly configuration looks like. Um, Now, in terms of 94L, I was trying to remember all my tabs here. Satellite imagery, we've kind of looked at it. Let's take a look at it real quick on the visible high resolution, because here we can see just a little bit of spin in there. If you look hard, it's in there. Right in there, some. There's some more right in here. That's that vorticity that I was showing you. There is some spin, but again, the thermodynamic properties down there just aren't really there. Too much dry air around. But you know what? This might come together just enough that we could get a tropical depression out of it. We'll see. The modeling is uh, in somewhat favorable agreement about that, generally. Here's the tracks right into the Caribbean. So again, our friends down here at sort of the junction between the leeward and the windwards, right through the middle, you're going to have to possibly deal with this. I know we have a lot of people that watch from Barbados. This should go to your north with a bulk of the weather, but, you know, it's hurricane season. Got to stay on top of it. Intensity guidance is a little interesting. The statistical, that's the ship's model here, statistical hurricane intensity prediction over the next few days does make it a tropical storm pretty quickly here. I don't think that's going to happen, but there's enough evidence in the intensity guidance envelope to suggest that this might become a short-lived depression or low-end tropical storm, just for what it's worth. And since it is in the deep tropics, that is interesting to see. When you start to see deep tropical development, it shows you to some extent anyway that the hurricane season is starting to perk up just a little bit. So here is the global model perspective from the Euro. This is the 6Z run. There's the 5,000 foot level, 850 millibar reflection. Not much, that's for sure. And you watch it over the next few days. Very small reflection down there, small framework or skeleton, whatever. That's the way I like to think of it. Moves right through the islands there. And then another piece of energy starting to come off Africa over here. So more and more we're seeing these impulses. And uh, as we end the month of July, get into August, we'll watch these even closer. But I'm not too concerned about things, really, uh, for the next several weeks uh, in terms of anything significant. You never know, you might get some homegrown development, something close to land areas like we saw recently, really, with Barry and Chantal and 93L. Um, and those are much shorter fuse systems. You don't usually see those too often in the longer range, just the big tropical waves that we, we will be looking for once we get into August. But you know, for now, in the week ahead, not too bad. All right, so that's it for me for today. I'm home. Again, it's great to be back. I'll be back for about a week or so. Then I'm heading out next week to the desert southwest for the southwest monsoon. I'll talk more about that towards the end of this coming week because I'll have more perspective on what we should expect out there and some stuff I'll be doing with our friends over at Fox Weather next week out in the desert southwest related to the monsoon. Exciting stuff. It's one of my favorite areas to visit. It's unlike anywhere on the earth, Arizona, Utah, Nevada, New Mexico even, I can't wait, but at least for now, I'll be home. So we'll stay on top of this, and I'll keep you up to date. From all of us at Hurricane Track, thanks for tuning in. I'm Mark Suddeth. I'll talk to you some more tomorrow.